Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. This is Junie's Plan with me. December is right around the corner, and I can't wait to share my Christmas-themed bullet journal with you guys. Before we start today's journey, I also prepared a small giveaway, which is a Santa drawing, and you'll find out how to get it later in this video. Without further ado, now let's get started. Oh, here I want to quickly mention that I made bullet journal kit stickers. They're in my Etsy shop now, but digital download only since I don't have a cutting machine yet. But I'm considering to make more on monthly basis. So yeah, go take a look, and I hope you'll like it. By the way, I really don't have much Christmas decoration on hand, so I just placed some of my stickers on the table as background, as you can see. So this month's theme is about Christmas gingerbread. I figure it is such a good opportunity to use the craft paper and paper bags I've been collecting, as I always wanted to try the tiering style setup. So I took a piece of craft paper and tried to make a rough triangle shape for the left down corner and the right up corner. Obviously, this is my first time, and as you can see, I struggle a lot. I keep fixing and redoing until it looks good to me. Then I cut the extra part to make it match the notebook pages. Before the pop-up setup, let's finish the 2D drawing first because it will be inconvenient later with those 3D pieces standing in the center. So for the background, I choose to draw some gingerbread in the shape that can represent Christmas the most, like Jingle Bell and Candy Cane. I'm not from a Christian family, but I've been feeling this vibe ever since I came to the U.S. I had some really good memories with friends on that day. So just like I'll invite people to celebrate Lunar New Year, I love to join the Christmas-loving atmosphere too. If you don't celebrate this festival, you can also check out the December bullet journal setup I made for my husband, which will be uploaded next week. After the brown base color, I also use a darker one to draw out the thickness of each cookie. Then use Posca white marker to add the icing. I've never made a gingerbread myself before, but I'm sure it's way harder to actually do it than drawing on the paper. And for some reason, I feel like this step just saved my terrible coloring. By the way, I'll leave the information and links of the supplies I'm using in this video in the description box down below. As for those two little human cookies, I want them to represent me and my husband. Speaking of which, there's actually another reason I choose to do gingerbread house for the cover page. We are getting a new house. Well, I was planning to share this good news later after moving, maybe in a vlog or a new studio tour. But because of the moving, I may not be able to upload videos on schedule next month. So I think I should let you guys know ahead of time. But I'll still try my best to make it work. On the left down corner, I decided to use alpha base stamps to write on December because the typing style letter just matches craft paper so well. Okay, friends. Now it's time to make today's pop-up. Go grab a piece of thick craft paper if you have it. Here, I'm just going to use this Chipotle delivery bag, or you can also paint one on a thick paper by yourself with brown color. If it's possible, make the long side about 30 centimeters. But if not, it's okay. You can just follow my steps to patch it too. Here, I'm going to draw the pieces for the house wall first. Dimensions are labeled on this video. Like I said, the paper is not long enough, so I have to draw two pieces and glue them together. But you can just combine it and draw in one piece if your paper is long enough. The second one is exact the same from the first one, but with extra part on the bottom. Then for the roof and connection pieces, let's move on to a white heart paper. Dimensions are labeled. Then let's also draw the tree pieces. Make sure to leave some space on the bottom where we're going to use to glue. Also, don't draw the trees too tall; otherwise, it'll stick out of the notebook after putting it on. After cutting them all out, let's glue the two craft paper pieces together. It doesn't matter which one's on the left, which one's on the right. Just need to remember that the piece with the extra bottom part will be the front one in the final lock. 
and then fold the walls based on the marks we made before plus the bottom part. But no hurry on gluing it together yet, because we want to draw the door and windows first. Here I also fold the roof and connection pieces too. Since I've never made gingerbread house before, here I also did some research and found some really cool designs on the wall. It actually made me really want to bake and draw one this year. Really wonder how it's gonna turn out. And if you're going to make one and post on the Instagram, don't forget to tag me so I can feel your joy and see your beautiful work. So here I used the white marker to outline the pattern I found online and tried to add some colors to represent candies on it. But the craft paper is kind of too dark as base, so I only add a little wreath and some red dots. In order to make it more fun, I also decided to cut the door and window open. You don't have to do this step, but if you do, be careful with the knife and don't hurt yourself. I really want the theme color to be pink and green instead of too much red, so I decided to paint the door by gluing a piece of pink paper on it and then draw the texture with pink marker, the door handle with white marker. Here I only draw two sides of the walls, but of course you can draw the other side if you want to. Then let's glue the end together and we're halfway done. The next is to glue the connection piece on like what I'm showing here. Make sure the center is exact located vertically under the roof ridge. As for the roof, you can either glue it on, leave it blank, or draw some patterns like what I did here. Since I want more pink color in my setup, I picked the light pink for this one. You can also use light blue to represent the snow, or just light brown to match the gingerbread color. Then don't forget to press it flat to check if the roof works well. For the trees, I was planning to use Crayola Super Tapes, but it turned out too dark on this paper, so I decided to switch to gouache. You can use whatever color pen you have, and you don't have to follow exactly what I do here if you don't have gouache pen. I pick a few different shades of green and also highlight some branches and texture with brown and white to make it more interesting. Before cutting it out, don't forget to draw the glue area under the two ends. In order to make sure it could work, I tested it a few times and here I'm drawing the glue guide to help you to understand it better. So basically, it's a big symmetrical M with 90 degrees on each corner. And it's easier if you glue one side on first and then put glue on the other side, then close the notebook to make it glue on the other side. Same as the house. 90 degree and each side is 45 degree. Glue one side first and then close it to get the other side glued too. And ta-da! So here what I used are zigzag fold and V fold. Really basic concept of pop-up mechanic. Feel free to customize to your own version and don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you're going to post your beautiful work. I'll be so happy to see either your recreation or with personal touch. On the month review page, I want to try something crazy this month and maybe you'll say it's not easy to use, but I just want to give it a try. So after drawing more gingerbread, I'm going to make 31 label covers, if that's how it's called. I print out some pink tone based color pages and then start to cut them out. The whole process took me way longer than I expected and you can't imagine how messy my floor was after this. I actually got the idea from the counting down box. A lot of makeup companies will release Christmas edition mystery collection so you receive a big box with 25 drawers. In each of them you can find a small surprise with either a skincare or makeup product. I thought it could be really cool to use it here because it feel like a little surprise every day when you lift it up, even though it's a little bit inconvenient to use. 25th needs to be treated differently, so here I decided to draw Santa since I don't get a chance to draw him anywhere else in the setup. Actually, I also did a Christmas theme last December which was not filmed, but I'll share with you guys in the yearly flip through later and you see how terrible my first month of Pujo looks like. 
Then under the twentieth, I wrote down moving to the new home. Are you guys interested in a vlog of me moving? If so, leave comments down below and let me know. The next is habit tracker and sleep log spread. Again, I start with tearing a piece of crap paper and stamping the titles. Then for the layout, I'm gonna go with my favorite X and Y axis style, using X axis as dates and the days of a week and Y axis for habits and sleep time. This time, I use one block to represent two hours so I can have more space on the bottom for more gingerbread house. I keep using the paper bag since it already provides the cookie color and texture. I use a brown marker to outline the shape of the house, and then use a white marker to draw out the roof, windows, doors, and wall decorations, just like how icing works on real cookies. Then cut them out and glue on the bottom. Overall, I really like how this turned out. Now we move on to the mood tracker. This page is inspired by Arden Fox. Some of you may already know her. She did a baking theme in December last year, and it was so gorgeous. I'll leave the link to her Instagram down below if you want to check out. She's also doing YouTube, so go ahead and take a look. She's the master of using Crayola Super Tapes marker. I just feel so embarrassed watching my terrible coloring process right now compared to her. Anyway, the design of this page is that for all 31 gingerbread cookies, I'll leave the icing part empty and then color it based on the mood of the day. And I just realized that I forgot to add the legends on. I'll fix it before posting on Instagram later. On the right side, I want to make it simple by gluing an envelope on for my brain dump. The idea is from the letter to Santa, except I don't have a wish list in it. Obviously, the envelope I prepared is a little bit too big, so I had to glue it vertically. And finally, we're on the weekly spread. From here, I'm going to use some of my stickers I introduced at the beginning of this video. In this Pujo Kit package, there are 5 sets of days of week, 4 months title, 6 small calendars for happy tracking, week numbers and 6 sets of dots, Christmas washi tapes, two pieces of stickers, and one illustration drawing. It was fun to create things in digital way, and my favorite piece is this snowball. I print out a bigger version from my Dutch Door Weekly spread, which you'll see very soon. As I'm gluing it to the center of this spread, here is the drawing process on my iPad. I also made it into a phone wallpaper, which you can find in my Patreon community, as well as all Buju spreads in this video, including the pop-up pieces. As monthly subscription, you can get more bonus content and get the chance to vote to the topic of my next video. Your support will mean a lot to me and this channel. Link in the right up corner and description box down below. After cutting away the extra page, I glue a piece of craft paper again to match the overall style, and then step goals and note on the left side. Then for the Dutch door, this month I want to try using the snowball shape in the center. So I mark the shape on the page below it and cut 4 pages away. You can also use scissors if that works better for you. Now it's time to fill in each weekly spread. The weekly sheets is actually matching the colors of the week label, but I want to continue the font style in the setup so I decided to just go with the stamping letters. On the last page, I glue another craft paper on the right down corner and then stamp monthly summary on the top. Okay, now it's decoration time. I pretty much just placed the stickers and washi tapes all over my spreads. Since I barely did it before, it took me quite a while to make it look good. But I'm pretty happy with how it turns out at the end. I also add some trees on the cover page. Basically, I add one more on each end and add another two on the back. Also, make sure they're not sticking out. If you haven't started making your cover page yet, you can also adjust it based on what I'm doing here. So yeah, that's all the setup I want to share with you today. 
as I'm doing final flip through, I want to give a special thank you to my new Patreon members: Yulilika, Chelsea, Mia, Kay, Madison, Veronica, Inga, Sunny Lu, Emma, Debbie, Leah, Malin. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate your support and love. Now let's talk about the little giveaway I'm holding. So I uploaded a video on easy ways to make Christmas gift cards last year, and I'll leave the link in the right up corner if you're interested. This one was my favorite, so this year I redrew it again in digital, printed out five copies to give to you, my lovely subscribers. It's gonna be international shipping, and if you're interested in getting it, please click like, subscribe, and leave comments down below with your delivery is here, so I know you're entering the giveaway. I want you to receive it before Christmas, so the deadline for it will be December 10th, and hopefully they can arrive on time. I'll announce the winner and contact you for shipping address. Good luck, my friends, and happy early Christmas! This is the third month I'm doing Papa Cover Page, and I've received so many lovely and sweet comments. So I'm planning to continue making more in the coming 2021, and I hope we can make our own Papa Bully Journal together. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye.